powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Hello and good Sunday evening, folks. Thank you for tuning in to close out your weekend with us. I'm Dustin Kleeman. Our top story tonight, at least 26 people killed in a mass shooting at a Texas church today. Police believe a lone gunman was responsible. and They say that the suspect is also dead. CBS's Courtney Zabowski is in Sutherland Springs with the story. Between 40 and 50 people were attending Sunday services at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. At about 11.15 a.m., witnesses say a single man with a gun walked in and opened fire on the congregation. He's a young, white male, maybe in his early 20s. He was dressed in, uh, in, in all black. Some four dozen people were wounded, more than half of them fatally. At least at this moment in time, there are 26 lives that have been lost. The gunman fled the scene in a vehicle pursued by a private citizen armed with a rifle. After driving north for some time, the suspect's SUV left the road and came to a halt in a field. Police arrived to find the man dead inside it. At this time, we don't know if it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound or if he was shot by our local resident. The suspect was later identified as 26-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly. Investigators say they have no idea what may have prompted this rampage. If you came here wanting to know the motive behind this shooting, you're going to leave here disappointed. The incident prompted a massive response from local, state, and even federal law enforcement agencies. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security are among those who've joined the investigation. Sutherland Springs is about 35 miles east of San Antonio. On Sunday, one person described it as the kind of place where everybody knows everybody, including the people who were killed. Courtney Zabowski for CBS News, Sutherland Springs, Texas. President Donald Trump, who's in Japan, has also been briefed on the shooting. The president wrote in a tweet, May God be with the people of Sutherland Springs, Texas. We'll be following the story as it develops. Police are investigating the standoff at a Billings Sporting Goods store that led to a suspect's death on Saturday. Officials still have not identified the man. Chief Rich St. John said he believes he died due to gunfire from police after nine hours barricaded inside the store. I will receive more details in a press conference set for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Cleanup has begun at Big Bear Sports Center, but it's unknown when the doors will be reopened for business. It suffered significant damage to the entrance. A Billings man was killed in a head-on crash near Townsend on Saturday. It happened last night when two vehicles crashed on U.S. 287 south of town. The 37-year-old man lost control of the vehicle, striking another pickup, and he died on scene. The other vehicle had four occupants who were transported to the hospital with injuries. Speed is considered a factor in this crash. Road conditions were snow-packed and icy at the time. A small town shows its patriotism today as it prepares for Veterans Day. The town of Roberts was honoring veterans for the special way and for three years running now. Citizens put up crosses for veterans who have died and dog tag replicas for veterans who are still alive. That total includes 308 crosses and 133 dog tags. All the men and women represented are from Roberts. One veteran, Joe Allen, died on Monday and his family held his funeral on Friday. His dog tag will be replaced with a cross this year. It's something they'll never forget. And this is something special that they're, they're paying tribute to, to Papa. I think uh, for my father and my uncle and everyone that's served, you know, it's great to recognize them and show that we're proud of what they've done for our country and everyone else. you got to support the veterans. They do a fine job and they're the ones that take care of you and give you the privileges to do the things that you probably shouldn't even do. Well, I think it's great. I mean, we're awful lucky to live in this part of the country. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic that this little town um, comes out in such a big way and shows their patriotism and their honoring of their veterans. Next Saturday in Roberts, the Allens and three other family members will be presented the dog tags in a special Veterans Day ceremony. We go to our weather scene now, Rob Griggs, where he knows small town Montana pretty oh, darn yeah. well. Roberts is a fabulous community, Isn't it? too. It really is. A lot of wonderful people there, some good friends. So. They did have snow on the ground. We're getting <laughs> more snow on the ground. That's what right. is the rest of the the days ahead look like. You're, you're doing great. You're just, you're, you're taking the weather <laughs> right out of my mouth here. Let me show you some pictures right now to give you a confirmation on the snow. Check out the dog and check out the path. 
<laughs> this dog has been around the tree a few times. Thanks to John Link for that excellent picture out of Red Lodge. Nice little amount of snow, too. Some of that fog created some interesting freeze points on the branches near Cilicia. Thanks, Gary Burrow, for sending us that one. And my buddy John Potter says it's beginning to look a lot like, uh, well, look at the star on the tree. So uh, you can go ahead and fill in all the blanks. Speaking of snow, what do we have in store? Well, according to the computer models, by close of business tomorrow, it looks like the Billings area could see maybe two inches of new snow, and then it's going to change all over again. The complete Storm Tracker Workweek forecast right around the corner. Dustin? All right, Rob, before we go to break the international scene, North Korea trade and national security, all those topics and more on the table as President Trump wraps up his first day in a high-stakes Asia trip. Rick Medigabriela, who has the details. President Trump began his day on a golf course with the Japanese Prime Minister before holding formal talks on North Korea and trade issues Sunday. Trump spoke to reporters before having a steak dinner at a Tokyo restaurant. Thank you very much for being here. We are in the midst of having very major discussions on many subjects, including North Korea and trade and other things. Trump also met and spoke with American and Japanese service members at a joint U.S.-Japanese military base outside Tokyo. No one, no dictator, no regime, and no nation should underestimate ever American resolve. Every once in a while in the past, they underestimated us. It was not pleasant for them, was it? It was not pleasant. President Trump also announced he expects to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin during his 13-day trip. He told reporters he wants Putin's help on North Korea. That meeting is expected to take place Thursday on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Vietnam. I'm Rick Damagella reporting. Still ahead on the Sunday 10 o'clock news, small Montana ranches have incredible roots now operating in 2017. Stay tuned for this week's Montana Egg segment. Plus, more from our favorite Highline artist in our Under the Big Sky series. And later in sports, the story of one Rocky Bear in the biggest battle of her life, the team she inspires every single day. You'll want to stay tuned for that. You're watching MTN News with Dustin Kleeman, Storm Tracker Weather with Rob Griggs, and Sports with Casey Conlon. This is the Q2 10 o'clock news in high definition.